Welcome one and welcome all to the SimSpeed TV channel and the Southpaw Racer channel simulcasting the 14th running of the Max Bantz Open. This is the Archbishop of Banterbury and my goodness it is absolute carnage out on track at the moment. We're running the Dallara IR01 at Bristol Motor Speedway and damage is at 100% because of course it is. I'm Reese Gardiner, the Southpaw Racer, and alongside me once again for this one is Jay Kennedy. And Jay, uh, you've already worked a bit of magic there with the overlays. A uh, very professional job on numbering Max Bantz in the bottom right corner. 100% and maximise the uh, mean value with the font choice in the overlays as well. Can't read half of them. Absolutely perfect for this event. Indeed, it is... Uh, Five minute open qualifying around Bristol Motor Speedway in the Dallara IR01 and of course they're running a setup that I did uh, just a couple of days ago, tried to make it push as much as it could in the corners. They actually have to lift off because in the, oh my god, D Mole, he is gone. Um, he's uh, unfortunately not able to get pole position just yet, he's missing out on it by just uh, over a hundredth of a second or just under a hundredth of a second. Um, but yeah, as you can see, uh, you do have to lift off in the corners in this Dallara IR01. Um, on the iRacing default set, you're actually flat the whole way round, but we can't do that for Max Bantz, it's just too easy. Well, I mean, Max Bantz wouldn't be Max Bantz without absolutely making it horrible, horrific, and uh, definitely not suited for driving pleasure. Um, if it was designed to be easy for the drivers, it wouldn't be Max Bantz anymore, so uh, I'm glad that you have all in the setup exactly what we needed to but what a combination a combination that would never ever be approved in real life you would never see a high speed open wheel car at this circuit in real life i'm uh, hearing from a couple of the drivers that were running tournament why they would do that i don't know they're actually running nerds not nine g through the corner and five g down the straight that is how Jesus. much down force there is in this car nine g through the corner means that you would literally pass out going around the corner here my god this is ridiculous oh my god i would i would i i want to see more races at bristol in this car but but with a proper setup it would certainly be uh something to behold but so will this event once qualifying is over it's 172 laps and um because i made the setup with the medium tires and uh, Jake Sperry couldn't figure out how to make tyre choice free in the server. Everyone's got to run the medium tyre, which only lasts for about 20 laps around here. Uh, after 20 laps, he's told me, 
the front right tyre is at 0%, so the drivers are going to have to make a, quite a few pit stops for tyres in this race. Not only that, they're going to have to make a couple of pit stops for fuel as well, because the fuel tank is restricted to 42%. This thing uses uh, about 660 millilitres of fuel a lap, which um, I, I forget the exact numbers, but uh, it doesn't make it all 172 laps anyway. And the reason we're uh, doing 172 laps is because uh, that's apparently the distance that our true founder, Maximilian J. Banter, drove to and from his estate to save the cat of Mr. Tibbles Frumpelkin. That's uh, Jake Sperry's uh, law, not mine. Uh, I am just communicating it for the benefit of you all. But uh, hopefully, Jay, we're going to see uh, a very exciting race here with uh, also a competition caution at some random point. Well, not only competition caution, we've got ca cautions on that will be iRacing generated as well. So it means that we're going to see, well, no doubt, there's going to be plenty of yellow flags throughout this event. We've got no doubt on that. But I'm loving seeing that we're seeing more debris go flying past the static cameras than we are cars. That's a sight to behold for Max Band. Yeah. It absolutely is. Um, the uh, the cat's name. I will uh, I will fish out the script and read it out again at some point because uh, it's very long. But here is the starting grid. Then Jacob Reed is uh, on pole position with Dean Moll alongside him. Jonathan Bain and Brenton Hobson on the second row. Chris Owen and Nate Stewart take up fifth and sixth with Liam Milner and Jimmy 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 Cato on the eighth spot on the grid with the top 10 rounded out by Andrew Dyson and Jack Mace, who uh, won the uh, the Max Bance a couple of times before at uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway Legends Road Course Long in the Chevrolet Corvette C8. Uh, going through the rest of the grid, Nick Skariev's going to start from 11th place alongside Sam Gunstone with James Hall and Joshua uh, Carroll Walden in 14th place. Mitchell McLeod starts 15th alongside Tyson Broad with Jamie Stokes, Austin Knight, Lars Vila, and Sean O'Hara rounding out the top 20. There's 31 cars here, Jay. Yeah, nice uh, strong field as well. I think we've got six former champions over seven different championships of this uh, prestigious event, which if you do win the Max Bands Trophy, you do need to print it out and stick it on your fridge as per the precinct... Uh, the precedence if i could actually get my words out speaking english isn't a strong point um precedence from david haynes winning max bance one you can hear my child running past in the background uh benjamin roberts tommy teasdale uh dylan bam adam briggs and then we got uh jd brooks chad dalton eric and tilly keegan kusan timu toika daniel stevens who interestingly got stuck in the catch fence during qualifying and couldn't escape out because his car was still technically moving in the catch fence. And, oh dear. And I can't read who the last one is. That is, um, yeah, I can't read that either. Nat, 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 so something. There's already been a crash on the formation lap. Perfect. Car number 13 has gone into Daniel Stevens, who is upside down. Again. Yep. Well, that's, uh... Yeah, not the best start there for Daniel Stevens. He's pulled it or back it into the, the pits. Well, yeah, who knows? He might actually avoid quite a bit of the uh, inevitable carnage that we will see around here at Bristol. Uh, time for the uh, the cat's name because it has been requested. Uh, the cat was called Dionysus Liberace Magnus Cornelius Michaels Jones Jones III, Lord Esquire of the Ambles of the Glastonbury Tour. We race in his honour tonight. Love that name. I just want to yep. know what happened to Jones Jones the first or second. Yes, a very big mystery. I wonder if they were mice. Um, either way, <laughs> the pace car's coming in and we're about to start racing here with Jacob Reed on pole as the green flag flies, gets the power down really nicely and gets a massive gap as they come into turns one and two for the first time. How long is it going to be until the first crash? Very good question. Wondering if the oh yep there we go it's already happened and the yellow flag is out and uh, we have only completed one lap so far that is a car way up 
in the uh, the barrier, and I couldn't quite catch who it was. Um, we've got few cars actually turned around. Sean O'Hara in the pits with heavy damage. Chad Dalton has lost his front left. Tommy Teasdale, who won the uh, Max Bantz at uh, Le Mans in the sprint cars, uh, he has also lost his uh, front wheels and massive damage on the front wing for him. So many casualties here from an early incident. Josh Carroll Walden also coming into the pits and getting it done there as everyone has to slow down to let the pace car by. Must say I'm disappointed that we're using this pace car. Would have much preferred to see the uh, the Kia Optima Toyota Camry Ford Fusion sedan. Mm, me too. Would have very much preferred that. Uh, proper meme that uh, generic iRacing pace car however we have the big boy the Ford Mustang in the session today and how long is this caution going to last is the big question cautions I think usually last about uh, four laps or so on an oval like Bristol and the laps are continuing to tick away so uh, we're, we're not going to be here all night but still it's going to take quite a while for this race to complete We'll take a little bit, but I think once we see a few cautions get out of the way and the field starts to spread a little, we'll start to see a little bit cleaner racing. But then again, cautions and wrecks are definitely a part of Max Vance. Now, one thing I do need to say now is I do know when the competition caution is coming, but I will wait Ooh. before I let you know, Reese, because uh, I did get filled in earlier. But hmm. um, yeah, we don't don't want to give it away too soon because it is uh, a, a uh, a surprise for the drivers. Yes, yes, a very nice surprise for the drivers, and I'm sure a lot of them are actually listening to this broadcast now to try and get some inside information. And um, a very good point from T-Burn21. Once we run out of fast repairs, the race will speed up. Drivers get a maximum of four fast repairs in this race. Why four? Because, according to Jake Sperry, it is less than seven. Um, so we'll see now uh, how long it takes for the drivers to chew through their amount of fast repairs. Interesting and that there's only been two drivers that have actually used a fast repair yet. Out of all of the drivers that were involved in that incident, only two have opted to actually use a fast repair. Well then, we've got uh, quite a few left then to go for it and evidently that's only minor damage and you know you're, you end up being a couple of laps down in the pits but that doesn't matter all that much Sean O'Hara uh, actually <laughs> uh, what a funny sight he went up on the jacks and his car still had his front wheels missing um, is, is it are his front wheels still gone Sean O'Hara no he's good or yeah right okay on my end he's still missing his front end which looks quite funny <laughs> it's just like a <laughs> Uh, a phallic symbol, um, you know, making its way through the pits there. Okay, uh, so, time then to look at going green. The pace car's lights are off, and away we go. Time then, who will match Jacob Reed off the restart? No one. Jacob gets off to another good start, but Dean Mole loses a position to Brenton Hobson, who slots ahead of him. And, oh, Mole is really starting to come under attack here because he's got Nate Stewart up alongside him and just grazes the wall. We've got another yellow flag here as there's a big crash on the back straight. Looks like Mitch McLeod has gone for a spin. Jamie Stokes has uh, collected him, as well as Keenan Cooson, who is going to be the man calling the competition caution tonight. Of course, Keenan got that honour because... He was the winner of the AI Days tournament, and we're going to grab a quick virtual racing school replay to see what happened to Mitch McLeod here. He just got into the outside wall, and then, oh, looked like a bit of net code contact there. Away he went. Oh, Jay needs to turn his mic on, apparently. There we go. Um, we're racing on the, the Tokyo iRacing servers as well tonight, so that will play an impact in regards to Netcode. Nobody has good connection to the Tokyo servers in this, se in this session, so it means that everyone's going to have a bad time out there. Excellent. Uh, big Netcode bants right here at Bristol. Now, um, 
I should highlight for those who aren't aware, um, Jake Sperry, when uh, when Max Bantz is not running, runs an AI tournament. Everyone uh, who competes in Max Bantz can submit an AI driver of themselves to be included in the tournament, and Sperry streams the all AI races on his Twitch. And um, Keenan Cousin's AI driver was the one that came away with the most points in this season of the AI Days tournament. So Keenan gets the honor of calling that competition caution that will be coming a bit later. But again, Jay is the only one in this box who actually knows when that caution is going to come around. So then, we've got a few more cars that have made their way through the pits. Mitch McLeod is now out of his box. Tyson Broad is still in the car, but missing both his front wheels. And Lars Vila is in the box too. Everyone else still out on track. And also got confirmation from a couple of different drivers that they are not listening to what we're saying. So, um, right. So I take, am. Take that the, what you will. Mitch McLeod's not listening while he's sitting in the comms box with us either. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh god, it's uh, it's a typical uh, sim speed broadcast here with one of the drivers just sitting in the box with us. A uh, little few updates. Um, of course, Mitch McLeod is going to have to uh, work very hard here, try and make his way further up the field. He is. Currently down in 25th position and um, one of the last cars on the lead lap with Brenton Hobson, Tyson Broad and Lars Vila still in the pits. Looks like Lars is making his way out of his box now so he will rejoin and now Jacob Reed is going to take point as we're expecting the lights to come off on the pace car pretty soon. Now, of course, if you are new to seeing this car on iRacing, this is a fantasy car that was built over the COVID uh, lockdown period with Dallara and iRacing base iRacing basically uh, producing a car that they think would be amazing if we could build it in real life to have sort of a, a hybrid of a, an F1 car it meets IndyCar meets retro F1 car meets anything and everything else all mixed into a, a car that seems to be very very polarizing for the iRacing community on whether they love it or hate it yeah, indeed. It's, uh, it's a very polarizing car indeed. Uses ground effect and a V10 engine, so it's got plenty of torque and plenty of grip through the corners. As It's another really good restart from Jacob Reed, but it looks like Dean Mole has not gotten off to a great restart. Once again, he's fallen down to fourth place there with Nate Stewart and Chris Owen now taking the rest of the top three spots and Liam Milner moving up into fourth place as there's a big yellow flag. Andrew Dyson gets into the wall and uh, collects a bunch of cars. Looks like the first of them was Sam Gunstone and then... There was a bit of contact down low between Nick Skariev and Eric Intilli, a former Max Bantz champion. So plenty of carnage there on what is now lap 14. There you go. There's some sound effects from Harrison in the background. Uh, ooh, Boom. My goodness. Bounced off the wall there. Dyson had no hope. Yeah, no hope whatsoever. And that car is utterly destroyed. So now everyone slows up and gets ready for yet another caution here. Thanks very much to Virtual Racing School for your support of us here at SimSpeed TV. Certainly uh, been a longtime supporter of uh, this little broadcasting firm we have. Who needs green flag racing anyways? Indeed, it's uh, going to be quite a long period here of... Uh, well, on Just that, constant cautions. Timu Toika, what do we had? Three half laps of green flag running. He started in 20, 29th. He's up 18 positions already. Wow, Timu Toika really starting to motor his way on through the field here. And uh, Timu, of course, won the third running of the Max Bantz Open. Uh, it was uh, Revenge of the Yeet, I believe. That was the... The I'll give Cadillac up remember the names. Suzuka. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, my memory's not what it was, but Timu Toika uh, taking the win in style in the third running of the Max Bantz Open. He uh, came close to winning the first one as well, the Mustang at Zandvoort, where everyone started on a thousand points and lost points, depending on how far down they finished. 
Um, nope, Sperry has corrected me. Puhaka was the one who won number three. So Timu won at the Wild West in the Pontiac Solstice running of the Max Band. Oh, Open, that was horrible which, too, uh, wasn't it? Oh yeah, that was absolutely horrendous. Uh, everyone was... Uh, <laughs> Everyone was having a very tough time there in a in a very tough format indeed. So yeah, we uh, we've had two uh, finish winners of the Max Bands Open so far. See if we can get ourselves a couple more in future runnings. So what's the update on fast repairs, Jay? Has anyone used their f um, any fast repairs yet? Yes, we've got. One, the highest placed driver that has used a fast repair is the driver of, who is that? Who is that? Chad Dalton. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen drivers who have used one and one driver that is on their second already, that being Sean O'Hara. Right oh. Chad Dalton is in 11th place at the moment. He's going to be starting um, alongside Timu Toika, the former champion, on their way towards the green flag. Everyone's formed up. The pace car is coming in now. And Jacob is probably going to get off to another really good start. Just absolutely darts away at the green flag as we are racing once again in Max Bantz 14. The Archbishop of Banterbury. How long is it going to take before we see another caution? Can we get more than a couple of racing laps in? It looks like Nate Stewart is really pressuring Mr. Reed up at the front. We're seeing some actual battling for position here. And We've done Nate's trying his best. We've gone a lap. Fantastic. But you see just how much aero push there is and how close they are to already starting to lap cars here. They got Keenan Cousin just up ahead of them uh, trailing this pack here. They got Adam Briggs and oh my goodness, Nato, number 13. As, oh, he's actually stayed off the circuit. So we are caution free. We stay green despite there being a crash. And here we go. Dylan, bam, lets them go the top three as they continue to try and pick their way through the traffic here. Keenan Cousin trying to get a position on JD Brooks, but oh, here we go. Oh, almost a bit of contact oh, there. No. Oh no, the top two have been involved and up and over goes Jacob Reed tumbling. Incredible scenes here at Bristol. Wow, that's a big, big wreck too. <laughs> oh my Lord. He's gonna have to escape and tow that way. Oh, absolutely wrecked. So contact between leaders and lapped cars. There's going to be some words being said here as uh, this looks like slow motion here, but it still looks amazingly fast because the Delara IRO one is so quick. And that's how it happened. From leading the race to uh, tumbling into the air, hero to zero goes Liam crash. Milner. Absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful. It almost needs like a ballerina tune on with it. Like gymnastics. You put chariots of fire or something yeah, exactly. like that. Yeah, perfect. That is incredible. So with all of that, we've got people going for the pits now because... Uh, the tyres are really starting to fall off with the amount of racing laps they've done. Coming through the pit lane, Jack Mace, Liam Milner, Nate Stewart, Jonathan Bean, Jamie Stokes. Jacob Reed still in the pits there. Austin Knight coming out with uh, Lars Vila, Keenan Cousin, Tyson Broad, all making their way out of pit lane. And we are running the dual pit roads here at Bristol, so there's plenty of drivers um, who will be pitting on the other side of the circuit. Of course, it's uh, up to you to remember what side of the track your pit stall is on. There's nothing there to help you if you end up entering the wrong pit lane. Exactly right, and that's something I know you and I have both done many a time racing at Bristol. 
a very, very good green flag run we had there. What was it? About 11 laps yeah. or so. It was great. Yeah, it was pretty I'm good. Impressed. Yeah. Yeah, lap time's uh, still in the 10 and a half second range, even on this Bent's special setup I made uh, on the iRacing defaults. And with a little bit of tuning, you can probably uh, go low 10 second, if not under 10 second lap times. Absolutely fantastic. Um, wondering how they're doing on fuel. Well, we have absolutely no idea, but um, from my calculations, I'm actually going to uh, double check my message history with Jake Sperry. Um, duh, 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 duh. So 122 laps is a full tank. So if I just go 42 out of 100 times 122 and uh, completely mess up on my calculator, press the multiply, not the divide symbol as we go green again. 50 laps or so per stint every driver's going to get. So looks like um, they won't be pitting anytime soon here. Maybe in the oh, next no. 20 laps as we are green again. And oh my goodness, that is huge. Oh my God. That's taken out a few cars there. Josh Carroll Walden being the uh, driver involved in the midst of that. He didn't get the best of restarts there and just got plowed into by Eric and Tilly. Got turned around and that took took out like four or five cars ultimately. Oh, actually looks like until he got bumped. Wow, that's a big wreck for Josh Carroll Walden, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely immense. So Eric got a little bit of a bump there from Jack Mace, a former champion. He's currently in the pits with one wheel attached to his car. There's the on board. My goodness. This is very stressful to watch, isn't it? Love but it. iRacing's new damage model in its full glory here. Love watching the debris fly everywhere. The brace. Yeah. We've made it what? nearly, what? We've made it over a sixth race distance already. Which yeah, is right. Not, not too bad, even though we've had five cautions it's gone reasonably quick yeah it has gone reasonably quick it's uh, it's been certainly uh been a bit quicker than i thought it would be with the amount of cautions now we missile i i take issue with your statement that this is too silly this is, is the whole perfectly point of doing I, something I would... sensible means that it would not be max pants Absolutely. I'd, I'd say that this is this is perfectly sensible for the circumstances that uh, that we're operating under. And as you can see, we've already seen quite a bit of excitement in this field so far. Dean Moll has managed to make it to the lead. Um, and of course, he's been involved in a couple of crashes himself, but he's been competing more or less up the front the whole time. And Timu Toika threatening there to uh, take another victory. If someone has a number and an X in their name, that number is the amount of Max Bances they've won in the past. So keeping very good track there of who is uh, having what kind of success. Jacob Reed is uh, currently first behind the pace car, which is um, where he was uh, at the start of the race, incidentally. He, he was the pole sitter. <laughs> and the uh, issue but, is he's now four laps down. Yes, so there's going to be some... Uh, well, I, I would have said there's going to be blue flags, but there's no blue flags in oval racing, so Jacob can race however he wants here. Wondering if he's actually going to get a wave around behind the pace car. Not too sure. You should get a wave around now once the pace car passes the start finish line. The lights will go out and he will get waved. Yeah, there out. we go. Jacob Reed will come around to the back of the pack as there's a car in the pits, Jamie Stokes. He has come to a stop at the end of pit lane, waiting for the pit exit to open up once everyone goes on by. Yes, indeed, there are some real-life rules in this race. Not many. Not, Not many. many. <laughs> uh, why are they Not going so slow? Because they keep crashing. It's a simple yes. reason. 
And that is indeed the reason as they form up too wide. Getting ready for another restart here. Dean Moll actually uh, got matched on the start there by Timu Toika. And they run side by side through turns one and two, but Moll gets the slight advantage. Let's see how much they clean up their act here as, oh, there's a bit of a battle there in the back as the yellow flag is out again. Eric Antilles losing his front wing there. I wonder why. It looks like Jamie Stokes has gone for a big old spin and... Wow, there was a big oh, crash up ahead of him. Oh, no. Oh, careful, guys. Come on. This is just Dalton, not good enough. Liam Milner, uh, Austin Knight all got involved in a wreck after the caution, but I'm not sure who brought out the caution. Might be able to help me there, Reese. Um, Looks like it was Adam Briggs getting tagged from behind by Dylan Bam. Copy. So, Briggs eat. Got a bump from the inside and spun back up into uh, Jamie Stokes and Sean O'Hara. And there was a mighty smash there. And uh, poor Nato had Oof. absolutely nowhere to go. That was a good one. Yeah. Definitely need another look at that with an onboard because that was pretty cool. Wreck. On board with the number 13. The wreck happens ahead and oh, slow up, slow up, slow up. No, can't get it done. The crashes are Wonder very, how... very spectacular, I must say. They are indeed. Oh, yeah. Biggie Cheese, perfect comment. Absolutely perfect comment. This is the indeed. Pastor Maldonado simulator. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. I dedicate this broadcast to Mr. Maldonado, the absolute legend that he is. And there's been a, there's been a few utterances in the chat of the big one, but uh, I think I there's think going we'll to be a big a, one. Yeah, or the, gonna... the, if if all the big ones are the same size, then is there a big one? No, they're all the same. There's no big yeah. one as such. They're just all the same. A big one implies that it's bigger than all of the other ones, but they're all going to be large proportionately to uh, to any other because of so many cars going so fast. The big few. The big few. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, big all. <laughs> I think the, the caution that we see that comes out that's a self-spin and only one or two cars are involved, they, they become the small one and every other crash is the same. Indeed. What if the big one is all the friends we made along the way? Indeed. Way too nice for Max Bance. Calm that down. Yeah, we've got we to gotta have a little bit more negativity than that. Either way, we're getting ready to go green again at some point because Timu Toika currently has a lapped car ahead of him. Jimmy in the number 151. And the lights are out on the pace car, so he's going to tour his way around. And um, if, I, uh, if I don't say the last name of someone, then the reason is that their name, including the nickname that Jake Sperry has given them, is uh, too long to show up in its entirety on either the iRacing timing or my Joel Real timing. So uh, just another part of the bands there, half identifying certain drivers. Some of them don't even have their uh, full nickname able to show up here on the overlays. Big news though, we've made it a quarter of the way through with only six cautions. As we are green again, how long will it be until the next caution? It's a fantastic start from Timu Toika. As Sam Gunstone makes his way into second. Still in third, though, is Dean Mole. We'll see if he can challenge for victory. He's getting a good run on Gunstone out of the turns here. And Sam is going way down to the bottom. He's actually slowing down. It looks like he might be going for a green flag pit stop here. I think he's got a penalty and has to come in and serve it under green. Oh, but, no. But my prediction of two laps, well, they have to crash on this one. We'll see if it happens. But uh, we got cars coming out of pit. Yeah, Actually, there has been a crash. Dylan Bam is uh, losing his front right, but he's kept it off the circuit, so no caution so far. Uh -oh. oh, no, it looks like we might have a caution here with uh, Keenan Cousin sliding down the order, and the caution is indeed out. 
What has happened to him, though? Yeah, he, good he question. Was, he was stopped on the track for quite a while, so... Caution took behind. its time coming out. He actually got a big old net code hit from Nate Stewart. So, we'll see oh. how this happened here for Keenan Cousin. That is huge. The caution took until that point there to come out because he was off the circuit. But watch this hit. Oh. Goodness How would me. you like to be a rear right tyre hitting the wall like that? <laughs> yeah, God. Absolute destruction. No survivors. Just when we thought we might get some racing indeed. As touring around in seventh gear with... Uh, is he missing a front wheel? No, Timu Toika is uh, simply not showing up that right-hand side wheel because of the magnificent wheelbase of the incredibly wide and chonky Dallara IR01. I'm amazed that uh, we can even get some racing in this thing considering how big it is. It is a very, very big car, isn't it? It's very wide, um, but it does produce a huge amount of air force and a huge amount of downforce. So um, that does mean that, you know, you can get a little bit of side-by-side -side going on, but I think the uh, the net code that we're seeing based off the Japanese server is providing an extra challenge for the drivers they may not have been expecting and probably weren't practicing for either. Uh, I'm I'm enjoying seeing the challenge of the drivers, what the challenge the drivers are now facing due to that. Hmm. Certainly will make for some interesting racing towards the end. Pace car lights still on, of course. This is the seventh caution of the race. And Timu Toika is leading the way for position. Dean Mullen second, Nate Stewart in third. Eric Antilli currently in fourth. We only have 10 cars left on the lead lap now. The last car on the lead lap is Jimmy in the number 151. Interesting, Jimmy doesn't have the longest name out of everyone in this race as well. Chad Dalton's name is a little bit longer. Joshua, uh, Joshua, uh, Carol Waldman's name is quite long as well. So these guys have uh, got long names. But uh, their position is quite low in the field at the moment, except for Chad Dalton. He's sitting in sixth. Sperry might have to work on that and make the names even longer for the next Max Band, so we have no idea who is who. Yeah, make the names so long that on these overlays, they're just uh, absolutely unreadable, like one of those eye tests that I had to take earlier in the week. Getting new glasses, Jay. Oh, look out. Yep. Good you, times ahead. You blind, blind, blind person that I can't speak about because I am blind too. Indeed. Certainly not blind is Timu Toika. He's got all of the track ahead of him as he gets off to a good start. Dean Moles having to defend for second from Nate Stewart as they make their way around the first lap. After this caution, once again, lap 53 of 172 completed. Eric Antilli maintaining fourth with Austin Knight all on his own in fifth. And we have the caution out once again. What on earth has gone on there? I am... Um not seeing anyone stopped out on track. Neither. Interestingly enough. How on earth did that is. happen? I don't know who, what the caution's for either. Um, the only car I could see that was stopped was Kenny Kusan, but he was already stopped in the pits, so I'm hmm. not sure who it was or what it is for. I can confirm to... it is not the competition caution. Not the right competition caution. Okie dokes. So, I'm going to check out what's going on in the midfield here. Has there been any big contact? Ah, there we go. I see what's going on here. Uh, there was a spinner. And it was... Uh, Lars Vila, I think. No, actually, no, it was not. It was uh, Tommy Teasdale who got spun around. Bit of contact with Jack Mace from behind. The netcode, of course, in full effect there. There it goes. Oh, mm -hmm. nice 360, though. Yeah, very good. He 
he should be quite happy with that display of skill. But uh, certainly won't be too happy with Jack Mace there, who's uh, just ploughed right into the back of him on the restart. Well Indeed, and there are still only 10 drivers on the lead lap. Jimmy Cato is still in 10th place. There hasn't been much of a position change in the top 10. And um, I should mention, Daniel Stevens currently sitting in 6th place. Remember, Daniel was uh, out before the race even began. He had a crash on the formation lap. So he had to spend a couple of laps in the pits just waiting for everything to go on. And he's managed to make his way up into 6th place. He is uh, one of the biggest gainers in the field. 24 positions gained, but the biggest position gainer in the entire field is our leader, Timu Toika. He's made up 28 places. Amazing that he's made up so many. Uh, Chad Dalton and Daniel Stevens are both uh, have used half of their fast repairs. And Dylan Bam has used three of his four. Mitchell McLeod asking me in, in uh, Facebook, I have a question. Ask that question away. Because I'm sure others have it at the same time, Mitch. I just want to know, does the uh, competition caution still happen if you start, can't fit it into the cautions? Um, I'm not sure. We make the rules up as we <laughs> go. That's the Max Bance way. I'm pretty sure that uh, we'll find the opportunity to put the competition caution in there. But uh, I think with the amount of cautions that we're getting... Competition caution is becoming increasingly irrelevant. Can I also just say I've broken these overlays and I don't know why or how, but uh, they've now broken. Okay, well, perfect. That is uh, that is another Max Bantz tradition there. The overlays absolutely breaking. As Timu Toika gets off to another good start here, we're racing again at Bristol with. Nate Stewart making up the position on Dean Mole. He's up into second. Oh, in and oh, yeah, but down onto the apron goes Austin Knight. He manages to keep it out of the wall and out of everyone's way. And he's got no way to get back on track as Eric and Tilly here trying his very best. Is oh, we've got a spinner. Sam Gunstone getting spun there, but he's managed to make it off the circuit. We stay green. Well, and truly on for the lead as well. Sorry for second oh, no. and third. No, caution out now. Yeah, right on cue. Out comes the caution as, uh, wow, that is uh, absolute Mitch, bedlam happened? down there. Looks like uh, Jamie Stokes went for a big old slide. Was that contact with Lars Vila there? Yeah, um, looks like Jamie Stokes got into the wall by himself and... Uh, then he went into Lars Vila, and both of those cars ended up spinning. In from behind came Tommy Teasdale and Nato as well. They created a huge pile-up at the top of the circuit. Mitch, you could have got away with that. You could have got through that. I don't know yeah. how, but you could have. I could have if Jamie wasn't there and coming up the track. I would have got through that fine, I reckon. Not good enough. Yeah, I know. Portion number nine, and we have made it past the third race distance. We have indeed. Austin Knight making up positions there as Eric and Tilly goes into the pits. We now only have nine cars on the lead lap. Tyson Broad has come into the pits and uh, should be making his way back out soon. He's taking some tyres and we presume a few uh, extra litres of fuel. Back on to 10 cars on the lead lap, by the way, as the positions go and uh, shuffle themselves about. Dean Moll has fallen back to ninth place and uh, not too sure if he's uh, taken a pit stop himself. Speaking of pit stops, by the way, we're uh, just um, going to do a quick count here of how many times everyone's pitted. Our leader, Timu Toika, has only pitted once. The most amount of pit stops taken so far is 10. That's Mitch McLeod's honor to have. Uh, Tyson Broad is a, a close second with the pit stop he's just taken being his sixth of the race. 
And in regards to fast repairs, there are now two drivers that are on their second to last spare car. One of those being Mitch McLeod. The other being, mm. uh, who did we say before? Joshua Carroll Walden. And in regards to using none of their fast repairs, there's not many cars in that situation. One of them being Timu Toika. Another one being uh, the fifth place car of Jonathan Ben. And we've also got Austin Knight. And there's one other in the list. Where are they? That is Dean Mole. Righto. I think I'm going to be one of the only drivers that finishes with... Uh, spare quick repair. Why you're not going to go again? I've joined the comments routine now. <laughs> oh, Doesn't yeah. mean you finish. <laughs> you, have to fi you have to finish the race to be a finisher. I'll go out there and do a lap at the end. No, I mean he's he's finished with the race, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So Mitch McLeod will pipe up every so often here. As we go green once more, Timu Toika with a great start. Nate Stewart and Daniel Stevens in the top three places as there's another car up and into the wall. There's a couple of them in different places of the track. Andrew Dyson has spun his way around and uh, also with some damages. Tyson Broad is my goodness. That was a very dangerous pit entry there, but uh, par for the course. I mean, we're not surprised. But we're seeing multiple cautions come out at once. Uh, Andrew Dyson like was... My God, that was friggin' amazing there. Uh, Whoa! Yeah, that, that is net code and a half there for Andrew Dyson. <laughs> and what a then, roll, uh, and then losing the wheel in the second phase. Like, I yeah. might get away from this, I might get away from this. Oh, no, I've gone. Side by side there with... Uh, you got squeezed a bit and then up and over. God, that is amazing. Austin Knight was down there, down low, and... Uh, up on the top of the circuit was Eric and Tilly, so Andrew Dyson didn't have much room to work with there. When we restart, we'll have less than 100 laps to go, which is uh, exciting. Indeed. that means that we're getting into that phase of the race where things are going to settle down to a, a, a mild level. Mild-er level. Jimmy Carto and Austin Knight have uh, made their way through the pits and filter back in in ninth and 10th. And we still have 22 cars left running in this race. Uh, Andrew Dyson is currently in the pits. I don't know if he's going to make his way back out, but um, we have the number 40, the number 13, the number 15, the 5, the 33, the 88, the 14, and the 074 all out of this race. Mitch McLeod. Nato, Jamie Stokes, Dylan Bam, Sean O'Hara, Brenton Hobson, Nick Skariev, and Benjamin, 1000 bits to Sperry on Twitch. Um, I am unaware of his last name. Yeah, I can't say that far either. Roberts. Benjamin Roberts. Some of these nicknames uh, yes. we don't understand, others we do. It's, uh, most of them are, are jokes within Sperry and that person. So that is why we don't understand the jokes, but neither will you. So we feel the same as you trying to work them out. Max Bance is the ultimate in-joke sim racing series. In fact, the uh, I'd say that uh, the the Max Bance Open in and of itself is, is a bit of an in-joke now. 100%. It's a... Uh... Definitely our favourite worst sim racing event of the iRacing calendar. The one and only original meme race. We crossed the line with 100 go. I can confirm that this is the competition caution as well because the magic lap was number 69. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well, uh, that was, uh, it was quite convenient then for the competition caution to come out uh, when it did, right when there was a couple of big crashes. So, now that we have the competition caution out of the way, we uh, can focus a bit more on seeing <laughs> uh, the amount of people going, oh, of, of course. course, the caution was on that lap, of course, yep. 
Yeah, honestly, yeah, I, I should have expected that. Um, pace car is in. We're going green. Timu Toika leads the way. How far are we going to get this time before the next caution? Nate Stewart and Daniel Stevens, second and third. It's on for fourth as Jonathan Bain is starting to face some pressure oh. here from... Oh, my goodness. They got concertina by Chad Dalton there. And up the inside goes Chris Owen. To the inside goes Dean Moll of Jonathan Bain and moves up the position. Can I just say I love seeing Daniel Stevens and Jonathan Ben's cars. They're both amazing. Jonathan Ben running with donuts. And Daniel Stevens looks like he's running with cheese. Excellent stuff. Donuts and cheese. As, uh, this is quite a... Uh, Good green flag run we're seeing. Oh, no. It's going to get go fault. over, I think. Yeah. Oh, Liam Milner actually going off the circuit down on the apron. No caution this time. Not my fault. Is it sad that we're seeing a long green flag run and they've only done five laps? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's absolutely tragic. Uh, the top three have broken away from the rest of the field here. Timu Toika has uh, got a nice lead over Nate Stewart and Daniel Stevens, but they've got quite the gap back to Chris Owen, who should start to make up some ground here if his tyres last. Remember, the medium tyres here, they only last about 20 laps around Bristol until they go uh, absolutely bonkers. Chris Owen starting to make his way through the lapped traffic here. Oh, there's oh. debris on the track, and there's the caution. Yep. Out comes the uh, the hardest working Mustang in the business, as, as the chat so wonderfully proclaimed some time ago. Very impressed with the pace car driver in uh, in this edition of Max Bance. He's led quite a few laps, hasn't he? Andrew Dyson has set the fastest lap of the race as well, by the way. A 10.5, and we need to work out who was involved in that wreck. All I saw was a nose cone and a front wing yeah. on the track. I didn't see who it was. Well, we've got uh, Jimmy Carto in Might the pits here. Oh, look at those white wheels. That is art right there. Uh, virtual Racing School replay. It looks like Jimmy Carto went into the back of Adam Briggs and um, then uh, some slight damage to the front suspension there. He wasn't able to keep it out of the wall. And that was that front wing that we saw when we were on board with... Uh, Chris Owen, we saw him run over, and, oh, yeah, I think we might have got away with that if someone didn't actually make contact with him. If everyone stayed single file, we may have stayed green. There's, uh, pit stops underway, and a lot of Indeed. them. Indeed. Yes, Timu Toika coming into the pits, which means Nate Stewart filters through into the lead of the race, uh, but he's going to take his pit stop very shortly. I think he might be on, uh, one of the, uh, or on the opposite pit road there, uh, where is Mitch? Out, it seems. And he's uh, advised me that he quit the comms box because he may swear, and he decided that's probably not the best. But uh, then again, it's Max Bant, so we're not too stressed about it because we've sworn in nearly every single one of these. Yeah, well, yeah, actually, um, it only took like um, it only took like five minutes for you to swear in the uh, in the last the one, Max Bant. Yeah, it was it was the one at Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte, wasn't it in the C8? Yeah. The only time I've ever sworn on a SimSpeed broadcast was during Max Bantz. And I did it on purpose. Indeed. We don't have to abide by certain rules and um, directives. What, well, what are they going to do? Take the series off the air? Meh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's might be our way of trying to get rid of Max Bantz. Purposely yeah. swear on the broadcast so we don't have to do it anymore. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, why hadn't I thought of this earlier? Oh man. Oh, I've just noticed too, Dean Moll is running bananas on his livery. Oh, cool. Well, uh, I'm wondering if he can drop a few peels and cause a couple more cautions. Oh, I don't think he needs to. I think they're happening anyway. <laughs> it's just banana peels all over the circuit. Bristol's been, uh, you know, after, after they ran the dirt events at Bristol, they ended up repaving it with banana peels. To be fair, it looks like it may have been that way with how the driving has been. Hey, we're about to hit halfway. Wow. Since we crossed the line, Barney's got his arm in the air, so that means we're one to green. Um, we are halfway through. We've completed uh, 
86 laps. We've got 86 to go. So, uh, at this rate, we should be done um, in about another hour or so at the, at the pace we're going. See what happens. So, Tyson Broad um, making his way into the leading spot here as the field filters up behind the pace car. And into the pits the pace car comes. It's a friggin' amazing jump from Tyson Stewart Broad there with Austin Knight just uh, keeping everyone behind to stay in second. But Chad Dalton coming under an attack here from Nate Stewart. And Nate goes up the inside and takes that spot from him up into third now for the number 16. All the way up at the top there is Eric Intilli. With the multicolored livery. He's got the Winra trophy on his airbox. Remember, he is a Max Bantz champion. And whoever wins this one will get that same JPEG sent to them. As we're starting to get some pretty good single file racing here. Chad Dalton losing places. Dropping down the order like a fly with d -Mol getting past him. And now Timu Toika past him as well. Dalton's just stuck on the outside here. He's got nowhere to go. And uh, there's just so little space between all the cars running down. And the bottom is all. Oh, that was contact with Sam Gunstone. Gunstone getting airborne. Incredible stuff. Love. Oh, I mean. Oh, no. Oh, no. Who was there that? There we go. Eric and Tilly. Jack and Mason, Jack Chris Ma Owen. Yep. Chris Owen's in the wall. We're still green for now. Even though Chris Owen's only got oh, a couple of wheels on his car. In the of the no! Track. No! Oh my god! No. Oh. If anything is the big one, it is that. My goodness. Chris Six. just slowed down right in the middle of the circuit. Tyson Broad, Nate Stewart, and Austin Knight all avoided it, but wow. Huge hit there for Liam Milner into Chris Owen which uh, took out just about everyone behind them as well. Dean Moll was very lucky to get away with that. Milner had no idea what was going on. You'll see him come through, just cross the line, this is through one and two, then come through turn two. Oh, no car. He and would have had no idea. completely gone. Yeah. And all you see from then on is uh, an ocean of broken Delara IRO1s. Incredible stuff. Oh man, I'm uh, don't really know what to say at this point. Really I... par for the course, these uh, cautions that we're seeing with such big contact as Chad Dalton into the pits. It's a uh, interesting little moment there. I'm just going to try and fix something in the uh, in the background at the moment, Race, I'll be back in one second. Okay. So it is myself solo for the time being. It's Chad Dalton makes his way out of the pits. Jay fixing something in the background. I'm not too sure what it is. Austin Knight making his way out of his pit box with uh, Josh Carroll Walden coming in for a routine stop as well, taking tires. Daniel Stevens and Eric Intilly stricken in the pits as well as Jack Mace and Sam Gunstone, Liam Milner still in his car. Chris Owen has exited his machine. So adding to the long retirement list that we've got here as, uh, goodness me. It's Daniel Stevens. I was wrong. Uh, I thought it was cheese, but they're minions. Oh, oh God. Minion cupcakes even. Oh no. That's, that, that is, um. Horrific. Yeah. Close to the worst thing I've ever seen. It's that bad that it's actually good. Yeah, I mean, uh, you you do you do have to you do have to appreciate it for what it is in a in a kind of death grips kind of way. Simply wonderful. You do admire the commitment and the uh, the achievement of what Daniel Stevens has done there with that livery is. Sam Gunstone is back out of the pits, taking tires are a few cars. Chris Owen getting tires with Liam Milner back out on circuit, or going to at the very least, uh, stopping at pit entry. Jack Mace there too, and 
they, along with Chris Owen, make their way back onto the circuit. Behind everyone else is Eric and Tilly and uh, Daniel Stevens. it looks like, completing their repairs in the pits, and they're going to make their way back out as well. Quick update, I think, Jay, on uh, fast repairs as we're about to go green, but we won't have time for that. We're going to go green. Tyson Broad leads the way. Nate Stewart in second. Dean Moll back up into third, but Timu Toika is going to start to try and vault his way back up the order here. Very Only close. But three drivers that have not used a fast repair at this stage. Only three drivers. Goodness. I mean, those three drivers, they uh, certainly should be honoured for their achievements. Lars Vila, very close with Andrew Dyson as it's side by side down in through. the field. So that is uh, Dean Moll then up into second. Let's see how long it takes for him to catch up here to Tyson Broad. 263 kilometers per hour minimum speed through these turns. This is something that a real driver would not be able to survive as that's another caution. It looks like Chris Owen, big crash in the number 97 and uh, wondering if that was net code. It actually was big net code there versus Sam Gunstone. There was basically a car width between them when the contact happened. There's a secondary hit here. This is Nate Stewart. Remember, Nate was in second. Uh, sorry, in second at the restart. Oh, Dropped yeah. a third behind Dean Mole, and he got involved in something separate from uh, Chris Owen. Let's see if we can pick up what happened with Chris Owen. Oh, it was side by side there with uh, uh, excuse me, oh. Sam Gunstone. Oh yeah, that was huge. I do love how. Uh, Nate Stewart sort of reverse and parked at exactly the same spot. Yeah. Truly, the world is full oh, of surprises. Beautiful. Oh. beautiful. Look at that. GP2 engine. We've got the Dogecoin that's done into a Red Bull style logo. Amazing. Yep. And the magic number there too. Such bull. That is... Uh, now that is true art right there. I enjoy that. Tyson Broad out of the pits. He's still there in sixth place. But now it's looking like we only have six cars left on the lead lap. Dean Moll, Timu Toika, Jonathan Bain, Austin Knight, Chad Dalton, Tyson Broad. Your cars on the lead lap here. Uh, fast repair count. We have one, two, three drivers yet to use a fast repair. The only driver in the top four that has used one of his fast repairs is Timu Toika. The other three in the top four have not. The Dean Mole, Jonathan Ben, and Austin Knight have not used a fast repair. Nobody is on their fourth spare car yet, but we have a few drivers on their third. One, two, three, four, five, six drivers on their third of four cars in this race. And uh, w uh, was Timu Toika one of them? Timu Toika's only used the one fast repair. Ah, righto. Okay, cool. For a second there, I thought uh, it was going to be crunch time for Timu Toika. He'd be living on borrowed time up at the front. But we are about to get going again here with the pace car lights off everyone's going to filter through into their double file rolling start once again spectral umbreon how have there been three cars not to use a fast repair very good question it is a mystery to us as well with the uh, amount of carnage that we've seen in this alleged race i'm more surprised that nobody's used all of them yeah I'm, i am too Improve very that, surprised guys. get out there Get back out there and improve that number. Indeed. We want more crashes. Dean Moll gets the restart very nicely. Absolutely nails it. With Timu Toika filtering into second. Nate Stewart's making his way out of the pits as they go green. It's going to be difficult. Oh, there no. is... Oh, my goodness. There's a big crash there. That was uh, Jimmy Cato that's uh, gotten turned around there. 
He actually looks like his rear wing was not attached properly, and he was having a lot of trouble uh, keeping the speed up there. Rear end contact from Liam Milner sent him around. Watch this when Jack Mace hits the wall. Bang. Oh. All rides for a second, up and over. And then that is car done for him. He'll have to use his next fast repair, which will put him down to four. But, uh, let's look at this restart. So moving on through, that's uh, Eric and Tilly, I think, oh. with... Oh, yeah, there you go. There's the big contact there for Jimmy Cato. Lots of debris out there on the racetrack that is immediately cleared away with our magic marshals. Here at Max Bance Industries, uh, we have our own proprietary magic marshal system that immediately clears debris from the track. Patent not pending because uh, we just don't give away up. our secrets. Yes, and we just made it up. That's a smaller reason, but it's still a reason. <laughs> it's a more legit reason. <laughs> Sixty to go. We're getting there. Indeed, we are. It's a it's a good question from Caro. Would this race be better or worse if it were done Arca style with no cautions? I um I I did assume that there would be no cautions uh, aside from of course the competition cautions when we were setting this up. But Sperry decided to make it automated. Um. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting proposition. What would this race have been like with no cautions? I think we would have seen uh, everyone plough through all of their spare cars before the halfway mark. I think we wouldn't have ended up with a finisher, to be perfectly honest. I don't think anyone would have finished the race. Yeah. Unlimited fast repair, no cautions. That's something that, I, uh, that I would like to see what I originally assumed the race was going to be before Sperry set me straight. The race would be more destructive without cautions and they're more, therefore more fun to watch. I don't know. I don't know if it would be. I'm, I'm yeah. in two minds on that one. Yeah, I think, I think if, there were, if there were no cautions, um, we would be having incidents happening every 30 seconds. We wouldn't have time to go to replays. We wouldn't have time to catch our breath even. So, yeah, we, I mean, we it's, wouldn't uh, have time to think of memes to uh, to make up and have jokes and and actually interact with you guys in the chat either. Yeah, indeed, we'd be uh, absolutely uh, on it the whole time. A bit like the uh, the Pro Truck Showdown that we broadcast on Tuesday nights on SimSpeed TV. Jay directs that and I am part of the commentary team. If you want something to watch on a Tuesday night here in Australia, very good series, the Pro Truck Showdown. We got some good competition in it with Altus Esports really taking the fight to the guys up at the front. So, Timu Toika back into the lead now as uh, the pit stops have all filtered through. Everyone back on pace here behind the pace car. Timu's leaving it very late to go here and he goes at the pit exit line. And that is an excellent start there. Jonathan Bain just holding on in second with Tyson Broad making his way back up into third place. We got Chad Dalton running wide there and allowing Dean Mole through and oh that's a big crush there behind Chad Dalton. We got Austin Knight, Chris Owen, along with Andrew Dyson. It looks like Knight going down into the uh, the apron. Just going low there. I don't know if that is a pit stop or not, but the race continues. And uh -oh. oh, Chad. Oh, there we go. Milner. Oh. Oh, dear. Tyson Broad. I was watching a different incident uh, on my end, but my goodness. That looked pretty huge there. Trying to, to pick up... You said Milner was involved in the, the other incident. Yeah, Milner was just uh, slight contact with uh, Chris Owen. Looked a bit net Cody from where I was. Let's see if I can pick it up. Well, either way, for, for Tyson Broad, it was... Um, contact with Dean Mole coming into turn one and 
Here is the uh, who are we looking at here? This there broad. is Broad getting Whoa. up into the wall. Massive hit there from side by side contact with Dean Malt as net Cody as ever. So second, third, fourth, and fifth have all still not used a fast repair. We have someone on their last car though. Chris Owen oh. is now on his final car in this race. 15 laps down. This is what we love about Max Bantz. People continuing to race even though they've got no hope of winning. Because no hope of winning means you've still got some hope of winning because you're still out there. Indeed. Well, Chris Owen, let's see how long he chugs along here. Chris, of course, the last car running technically in the order. Down in 23rd position. Still have 23 cars in the session. Never give up, indeed. See what Chris Owen can do here in the final 50 laps of this race, as we do have 50 laps to go now. Austin Knight, Jonathan Bean, and Dean Mole still the only three yet to use a fast repair. Amazing. Yeah, indeed. That they've managed to last this long without using one is fantastic. They're, they're going to be saving them all up until the end. And, um, you know, when we start seeing more drivers drop because they've used all of their fast repairs, then we'll probably see them rocket up the order. Chris Owen making an appearance in the YouTube chat saying winnable. Indeed. I'm sure that uh, he'll be able to get his way up there. We've seen Chris Owen pull off some amazing things in the past. Tyson Broad's back out on track. Or at least making his way back out on track here coming out of the pits. Tommy Teasdale in the lane as well. But lights are off on the pace car. We're going to be getting a restart here. Of all of the Max Bance races, this is the 14th. This, this, I can't say it. You even that's messed that up. I did. Hey, I, I admit, if it's the English language, I'm messing it up. Green flag flies. We're back underway. <laughs> we are indeed. And Timu Toika gets off to another good start. But we're Caution's instantly. Instant caution. We only went half a lap. And it looks like J.D. Brooks and Josh Carroll Walden were together on circuit there. So what happened between them? J.D. Uh, oh, looks like J.D. Brooks came together with Jack Mace and J.D. slid across the circuit. Right into Josh Carroll Walden. Oh. That is the slow-mo. The superest of slow mos. The slowest of mos. Even in slow mo, it looks painful. Yeah, that rear wing just dropping away in slow motion. That's uh, heartbreaking stuff. Mister Toyka behind the pace cars. That's a wave around for Eric Intilli in eighth place. The leading car a lap down is Josh Carroll Walden. But he's, uh, he's making his way through here. Speeds up at the end of the pack. We only have six cars again on the lead lap here. Our top six being Tibu Toika, Jonathan Bain, Dean Mole, Chad Dalton, Austin Knight, and Jacob Reed, who is our pole sitter. And Jacob... Quite the comeback here for him. He was mired down in the field uh, some time ago, but he's made it back onto the lead lap and now trying his best to get that win back after setting the fastest time in qualifying. Should have limited the tyre sets too. Oh my goodness, can oh, you imagine? imagine? And especially when we're hearing that the front was actually blowing under 20 laps of uh, green flag running in practice with the hot track. So 
That would have been hellacious. Would have been entertaining to watch, but yeah, I'm not sure how many drivers would have been happy. Uh, our number count for drivers on uh, many, uh, many, not many, all uh, cars being used is now at three. Jimmy Cato and Liam Milner both now have used their car allotments as well as Chris Owen, as we said before. So it is indeed crunch time for those guys. They're going to have to try and stay out of trouble as best they can. Otherwise, they'll be spending some time in the pits and they'll end up losing a couple more laps there under caution. Seems that repairs are uh, reasonably quick in this car, but still, it's time that you don't want to spend in the pits. Seems like the towing time seems to be the issue for drivers. If they've had to tow back to the pits... Very, very long tow time, which is surprising considering how short the circuit is. Yeah, indeed. JD Brooks makes his way back out onto the circuit. He's currently in 14th place there. Just some, uh, some more chat here. Um, Rhea Domville raising the possibility of this, uh, being, a uh, only a one incident limit event like the uh like the spa event that would be a technicality, uh, absolutely it is, horrific it is a 4x event isn't it because you've got four spare cars so you have four True. x you're done indeed well we are green again and timu toika has gotten away to another good start here Jonathan Bain starting to come under attack here from Dean Moll as the pack behind pursue. Jacob Reed's gotten up into fourth and he's starting to leave Chad Dalton and Austin Knight behind. Round goes Daniel Stevens on Austin oh, no. Knight as he tries to make his way through the air. Goodness me, Dean Moll has lost his front wing and oh no, comes down into Daniel Stevens and oh, that's going to create a huge pile up on the back straight. The caution is out. We've got plenty of cars now missing wings. Tommy Teasdale on his top there, upside down. Josh Carroll Walden involved, Tyson Broad involved, Timu Toika just picking his way through the, the debris and the carnage here. This oh started with Jonathan Lord. Ben just clipping the wall coming out of turn four. So he hits the wall here. Bang. Dean Mole oh. gives him a little hit. And then Mole struggles, makes contact with Daniel Stevens. Stevens makes contact with Jonathan Bean. And then Bean back out in front of the field. When I click the right button, I'll, uh, I'll find him again. There he is. And uh, causes uh, a parking lot. Chris Owen, the dream I think is done because there's only three, three wheels left on his only wagon left. He's going to be in trouble getting uh, that one around to win the race from there. And certainly in trouble now is Tyson Broad. He has disconnected from the server. Here's the view from Chris Owen. The contact happens up ahead, and oh, Chris didn't have many places to go there. Oh, the Managed rejoin's to... going to be the worst. Oh, oh there it is. Ouch. <laughs> Just saying hello to everyone in front of him as the pace car zooms by. That's a bit unsafe there from the pace car driver. I love that. You, you can't hear it in your feed there, Reese, but you can actually hear Chris's car revving the engine, but there's no wheels touching the ground, so he wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Well, Tyson Broad went full on into that pile up and um, lost all functionality of his machine. Unfortunately, it looked like Tyson couldn't get it turned around, so... He's elected to retire from this event. Poor Mr. Broad. Rest in peace. Would have uh, would have been a very good run from him. Certainly was in he contention still, for the win at one point. He still had a, a car left. Oh, Did he? Did Tyson Broad. Yes. The hell are you doing, Tyson? Get the hell back in here. Yeah, Jesus. I'm disappointed. That's uh, not Max Bant style. Like, Chris Owen, I can understand him rage quitting because he's got no spare cars left. But... You still had a spare car. That is un Max Bantz like. Unacceptable. Not, not good enough. And uh, only four cars left on the lead lap. Indeed. And uh, could we get a highest number of incidents count, please? Ooh, because yes. uh, we award someone the Brown Star. 
No, I can't see the number. Oh, damn. That is... Uh, Sperry has hidden that number from me. That is sad. Oh, well. No brown star awarded this time. I mean, we can still award it, but I can't see the number at this stage. Hmm. We shall see. Yeah, T. Burn, you uh, you are uh, telepathic. I think you got a psychic connection to me. Here we go. All Liam right. Liam Milner on fifty-two incidents. So, Liam Milner, the ball is in your court as we are green once again. Jacob Reed's back up into second now as both rear tires missing on that car. Uh, Austin Knight. Up into third place, Chad Dalton holding on to fourth. Daniel Stevens in tenth place, but trying to work his way forward. Still positional changes happening out there too. Is another caution. I've lost count, so I think it's sixteen. It may be seventeen. I don't know, but I don't even know who the caution is for. It's Jimmy Cato. He uh, yeah. uh, some side by side contact with the number twenty eight of Lars Viela. He was already missing his rear wing. Yeah, on my end, he was already missing his front wing, too. It's What? He's, oh, he's missing his front wing, too. He's actually on his yeah. last car, which is why he's got none of them yeah. left. Yeah. Oh, my well, God. He's got you, no if wheels, you, too. <laughs> if, you, if you rewind back a little bit further, as he was going through turns one and two, the oh, rear wing actually <laughs> flew off. <laughs> yeah, stay on him here, because this is fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Love it. Yeah. So, we wait here for the green flag to fly and coming through turn one rear wings just holding on but nope away it goes it's like the tethers Goodbye. there were just holding on literally for the last possible moment <laughs> right oh uh, oh pit stops we got green flag pit stops happening no we haven't we're still under caution oh sorry yeah you're right jesus christ jay <laughs> It can't be green flag pit stops when they're under yellow. Hey, that's the closest we're going to get to green flag pit stops. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Caution laps versus green flag laps. That would be an interesting stat to uh, find out. We'll find out after the Probably race is over. Yeah, we'll have to wait till the race is over for that one to look at the results. We still have... Two cars yet to use their fast repairs, or to use any. One of them being Dean Mole, who's stuck in the pits. But he will use one when he can. And, of course, uh, Austin Knight has not used one. Jonathan Bain has used one and has got back out there, thankfully. So he's only on one. Still got three left with this many laps to go. But he did go four laps down from having to use that toe. Hmm. So four cars now on the lead lap. Toika, Dalton, Reed, and Knight. All together there up at the front of the field. It is between them, but if any of them come a cropper, then it's going to be an opportunity for someone else to make up a couple of laps. The lead car a lap down at the moment is Eric Intilli. He is two laps down at the moment. He has a lap on uh, Nate Stewart and Josh Carroll Walden. They have a lap on Jonathan Bain. It's another two laps down to Daniel Stevens. Eric until he's still in this because if he stays uh, where he is, even if he stays at the back of the group, he will get a wave around under every caution. There's no doubt we're going to see at least two more. Puts him back on the lead lap, back in with a chance. Well, we'll see how the wave around treats Eric until he there, but everyone's formed up here on the back straight and we're getting ready to go green. Once again here, in Max Bantz 14, the Archbishop of Banterbury, Timu Toika, away at the start. And through goes Jacob Reed up into second versus Chad Dalton. Daniel Stevens now starting to really power his way forward. He is towing Jack Mace forward with him, along with Andrew Dyson. Jacob Knight, uh, sorry, Austin Knight, is really starting to fall back here. He's right in the midst of all the lapped cars as Liam Milner tries his best to get a leg up on him. On for the lead. Indeed. Have a look at this. Oh, Timu Toika, he's messed up on the exit and up the inside. Oh, oh, oh. Contact. But he manages to keep it 
going. Incredible stuff there from Timu Toika. What a save. But Jacob Reed, our pole sitter, back into the lead. Amazing recovery from Reed. Oh no, we got a car on the wall. It looks like JD Brooks. Oh, and he's going down the circuit. Everyone avoiding him. Wow. Amazing. That's the first caution, I think, where no one has collided with the car that crashed. And one thing I've just noticed too, I think Timu Toika has a meatball flag because he did oh, not dear. register a lap time on those last two laps. Well, Timu Toika is going to have to come in and uh, take a spare car out of that one. Grabbeth, the virtual racing school replay of the pass. Toika running a little bit uh, deep in those corners and net code contact there versus Jacob Reed. He's the on board. And it looks like Toika. A little bit, bit left-hand down, isn't he? Yeah, ever so slightly. But there, there, there is a little bit of left hand down built into the setup, so that might be oh, a bit misleading. Oh and man! Who was, who was the caution again, Bruce? Uh, the caution was for Mr. Brooks, JD Brooks. There he is. Hey, we've only got twenty laps to go. Yeah, this is rapidly coming to a close here. Oh. Looks like it was contact with Timu Toika that, that did it for him. Yeah. And amazingly. Everyone avoided him. Stopped in the middle of the track. So, Reed comes in to make a green flag stop. Timu Toika is in as well. He's come in and made a stop. Austin Knight's come in to top up fuel once again. Still has not used a fast repair. Eric and Tilly now only one lap down. And he's going to go for a quick pit stop here. Just to keep his car nice and fresh. That's a good caution count there up at the top of the screen. I think it's 17. I mean, I really don't know. I've lost count. We'll, uh, we'll find out for sure once uh, the race is over. We've exited the server and had an opportunity to look at the stats. But Jacob Reed with the fight back. He is uh, right in contention for the lead as Eric Intilli now only a lap down and in fifth place. This could all change in these last 19 laps. There's a few drivers that are going to get a wave around the pace car here because Team Toika, as we said, did pit. Uh, so Nate Stewart and Josh Carroll Walden have not pitted. They'll get a lap back here. Put them only two laps down. So we've got seven cars within two laps of each other now, rather than the uh, four on the lead lap and the rest three or more laps down. That's changed pretty quickly over the last few laps. Indeed, it has changed very quickly. Ken and Kusen back out on track, meanwhile. Less than 20 to go. Remember, we've got three green-white checkered attempts, so... Making sure you've got enough fuel in the car, very, very crucial for these guys as well. So no surprise to see all of our lead cars coming into the pits. Make sure that they're set just in case they need tyres for these uh, green-white checkers coming up, because I think we're going to have one. Indeed, we'll see how many we get. As Timu Toika filtered back into the lead and now just blasts away. Austin Knight takes second from Chad Dalton. Meanwhile... Jacob Reed having to pick his way through lapped cars here. He's got Jonathan Bean to contend with on the inside, but a good run there down the straight is on board with the donut Jonathan Bean car. We have another caution. Now, who could that be? Looks like... Uh, James T. Milk and one sugar hole. Ah. Uh, it took me a little while to understand that joke too. Yeah, I didn't read it slow enough to get it. <laughs> So what happened to him here? He was motoring along nicely, but it looks like a bit of net code contact with Lars Vila. Tried around the outside as uh, Vila was down on the inside, Ooh. and there we go. You could have fit a full rear tyre in between them. 
and the contact was still made. Now, no surprise to see leaders pitting again. And guess what? Eric and Tilly now on the leading lap. Oh, ho, ho. here we go. This could be a great fight back. So we have two former Max Bantz champions in the top five. Timu Toika and Eric Intilli. Austin Knight, Chad Dalton and Jacob Reed have not won a Max Bantz Open yet. Could this be when they take the glory of the Winra Trophy? Can Eric Intilli recover starting from 27th position? In fact, we've got three drivers here in the top five. Intilli, Dalton and Toika who started outside the top 20. And Austin Knight started from 18th place. In our top 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the top 10 are up 10 spots or more. That's pretty fantastic. Oh, there's a car stopped on the track there. Oh. Oh, dear. The red car. Red oh, car. What is red car? Jack Mace. Oh, Jack Mace. What's going on for him, I wonder? Oh, yeah. wow. It, that... Oh, okay. Um, it was a very spirited pit exit for him. He just went full speed through the pits and then smashed straight into the wall. Was that a rage, a rage quit, I wonder? Rage quit. Wow. He still has a spare car left, so it doesn't make sense. But, uh, yeah, he's done. Mace has an MOT to get to, Jake ah, Spear, right. he says in the chat. There you go. What does MOT stand for? No idea. Okay. Either way, he has Sounds a commitment. Important. Sounds way more important than Max Pants. I mean, I'd prefer to be anywhere but doing Max Pants. Yeah. Sure we'd be in any number of more fulfilling life activities were it not for this, but we all choose to spend our time this way. So do the drivers. Ah, uh, MOT, Ministry of Transport. Oh, I think we can uh, come up with a better acronym. Yeah. We can come up with a much better meaning for MOT. Chat, that's your cue. Try and come up with... Uh... You've got ten laps. Yeah. There's green flag back online. Timu Toika leads the way from Austin Knight from Chad Dalton. But here comes Jacob Reed. He's going to try his best to make his way up here. But Andrew Dyson is making things very difficult for him on the inside. 100% making it difficult for him, but uh, slots back in behind. And I must say, there's not too bad a pace there from Dyson as well. So it's going along all right. And have a look at the momentum through the mid corner there for Jacob Reed as he's side by side with Chad Dalton. We've got to trust the other driver on the exit of the corner as uh, Jonathan Bain now tries to get through as well. It's uh, finally moved done. Six laps to go. This race may finish under green. Don't know if it will. We've got green white checkers to come. Macy's old trash. I don't think he's good enough. We need another one. Mother Rostich training. Monkeys of time. Manifestation of trumpets. <laughs> Maximization of the bants. I like that one. I like all of them. Timu Toika, though, uh, starting lap 169. Nice. Nice. He's going to have four laps to go, and there's a caution. Tommy Teasdale in the wall. And in the pits. Yeah, right. So, this is going to be the final dash, and looks like that was net code contact for Tommy Teasdale on Lars Vila, who's been involved in quite a few bits of net code contact in this race. Oh, bam. That is huge. For Tommy Teasdale, a former champion himself, but will not take the honours this time around. So this will be green-white checker number one. Right out. This is not going to be a finish under caution. We will have three green-white checkered attempts. Now, how many laps is that extended by? Uh, we'll extend that... it to three to go. 
when they come up to get the green. So it'd be two, three extra racing laps. Oh, mayonnaise right. on tap. Oh, I like that. Give it to me. Chad Dalton uh, making a pit stop there from third place. Eric and Tilly also in the pits. They want the freshest tyres they possibly can and a little bit of extra fuel here for the final run to the line. Timu Toika, though, still out there in the lead. For those of you that don't understand what a, a green white checker attempt is, of course, called overtime in uh, real life NASCAR now. The drivers will have three attempts to finish this race under green flag conditions. There'll be three fl waving of flags. First attempt will be green. Then the next lap, they'll get the white and then the checkered. If we do not get the white flag waved, we will have another attempt at going green, white, checkered. We'll get three attempts of that. If we don't get all three attempts uh, to the white flag, we will then finish it under caution. So, got a little bit of time for the drivers to, to get their heads on. But if we wave the white flag, we will continue racing to the checkered. Here we go then. The cars taking their places here behind the pace car. The line will be crossed momentarily. And uh, we've completed 172 laps. So we have fulfilled the marker of tradition of Maximilian Jasmine Banter making his journey from Lanellian Wales to the Banter Estate and back. Apparently, I, uh, I'm mispronouncing that Welsh town name. Um, we well, appreciate nice a couple try. of pointers. <laughs> and that I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm the worst at pronouncing normal words. Hmm. Some more uh, attempts here at making up MOT acronyms. Mostly over long toes, mustard over trampolines, mundane and obligatory test that is relevant and witty, manscaping old truckers. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that image is time. now in our mind. What a, what a time for that to oh. be put into our heads as it is the first green white checkered. Three laps to go here. Timu Toika leads the way. Austin Knight up into second. Chad Dalton third. Eric and Tilly in fourth. Daniel Stevens leading white up flag. the lap cars behind. It is white flag. That is just absolutely gone by. Super quick. Timu Toika coming out of the final corner and comes home to win the Max Bantz Open for the second time here. Incredible run there from Timu, starting in 29th position. As there is the celebratory crashes across the line, Timu is going to do the most magnificent donuts in history, I believe. At least he's going to try to anyway here. V10, let it sing. Timu is now a 2x Max Bantz winner. Let me just find my memes folder so that I can find the Max Vance trophy. Present. Yeah, and if you cannot find it, I shall send it to you. As Again. I will send it to Timu. My goodness. The celebrations continue there for Timu Toika as we have Jake Sperry in the box here. Jake Sperry, the... Uh, fellow organizer here of Max Bantz and the man in race control, Sperry. What a race that was. It was a race. At the beginning, I was a little bit fearful that we would have, uh, I believe, 170 odd cautions to go around in terms of this one. But the drivers, as soon as it got to crunch time, put their heads down. The focus was there. And really, we saw a very, very strong dogfight. Team Utoika, of course, becoming only the second driver to pick up multiple Max Bants and Winra trophies. And on top of that, stops the streak of four straight first-time winners. This is an incredible moment.
Absolutely is. We have Max Bant's history truly being made here, but uh, certainly it was very difficult for the drivers out there as well. Um, with, uh, with the way the server was set up and the way I set up the car, these drivers could only use the medium tyre, which certainly made tyre wear a big issue. And it's very important because here at SimSpeed we do a lot of work when it comes to this Delara IR01. We broadcast a lot, me and Jay often uh, are on the uh, stream looking at the Delara Formula IR series. And we see when they go racing in the IR series, everyone's on the hard compound tire. It's the one with the most longevity and the most fun. We were looking in the practice and 53 degree track temps, you know, the tire was popping on the front rights after 20 laps. So it's ultimately a, an incredible achievement to go and try and get as much as you can out of the medium tires. And I tell you what, Timu deserves it. He's been out ever since he won his uh, Winra trophy. He hasn't been in a Max Bant since. This is his first Max Bant back in about two years. And he's gone and got it back again at the first attempt. Well, and it really makes me think about, you know, what his record might look like if, uh, if he had turned up for some more in the interim. Either way, I'm sure that this will uh, be... A good pointer for him to try and come back and get a third WinRAR trophy. That is the WinRAR trophy, the most prestigious JPEG in esports. And uh, we're just waiting now for drivers to jump in to the uh, interview booth so that we can have a little bit of a talk to them after the race. And I found the Brown Star trophy as well. Oh, yes. It's not really the Brown Star trophy. It's a trophy I've got for something else, but I think it fits the Brown Star. Let okay. Me, uh, let me try and it. find it again. But my memes folder is full of a lot of very, very good memes, so I'm just trying to find it again. Mm -hmm. Well, we shall, uh, we shall wait and see, but um, I am going to... Uh, uh, Austin Knight wants a link to the Discord, to I'll, the Simspeed I'll Discord. Get there. I'll get All there. Right. Yeah. Don't you worry. All right, okay. you ready? This is a trophy ready? that you will know from some other events. Mm -hmm. But they're presenting the Brown Star. Brilliant. Simply magnificent. And uh, who ultimately got the Brown Star trophy with look, the look, most me, amount of incidents? Let me double check so, that information right now. I, I've got this. So there were many incidents to be had over the course of this race. The least instance was Nick Skarajev, where you do the Fandango, who had eight instant points overall and was out of the race quite quickly. The most, with 68 instant points, which is impressive, oh. is, La is Lars likes Mayo Vila. Lars Vila, 68 incidents. So close. My goodness. Ah, uh, but either way, that will be the... Uh, the Brown Star going to Lars Vila. And uh, Sperry, do you have, um, just before we go to the interviews, do you have the amount of cautions in total? No, I didn't bother to keep count of that. I'll have a look. Okay. I can Neither did we. <laughs> I lost count. 21. I was out by one. All right. 21, 21 cautions, cautions for 105 laps. <laughs> 105 caution laps. Which, ironically, That's is it. the exact same amount of laps as Timu Toika led that race. Wow. So... I want to give the Winra trophy now to the Mustang. Yeah, so do I. Certainly, the although pace car driver deserves it. Although, because the pace car driver did 105 laps, he didn't complete the same number of laps as Timu Toika, so he does finish a lot of laps Oh, down. no! Damn. Okay. That's a big shame. Timu Toika joins us in the commentary box here. Timu, you are a two-time Max Bance winner. Congratulations. How hard was it for you out there? Man, it, it was it was so hard. You can't believe it. Um, no, no, it wasn't. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it was, uh, it was a difficult race for, for, uh, variety of reasons uh one of them being the 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 server being so far away so the, so uh i i got clobbered a few times i i wiped out a few people and uh yeah it was uh, a very difficult race but somehow 
me and the boys back at the shop got the job done today. And uh, yeah, what a, what a, an amazing feeling to be a, a two-time back-to-back -back Max Benz champion. Indeed, back to back for the uh, the appearances that you made anyway. And you know, speaking of that last Max Benz appearance you made in the Pontiac Solstice at uh, Wild West Motorsports Park, um, how how does this format compare to that? Would you say that this was easier or more difficult than your previous visit to this series? I mean, the the, the rules seemed very similar however they were quite different in uh, in the in the um in the essence that this is you know easy drive uh you know close quarter racing and the the pontiac solstice at wild west was was very the track was very very big uh the cars were were not easy to drive uh with, with the all the clutch and shifting and all that you had to do so it, it wasn't i wouldn't say one was easier than the, than the other but they are difficult in in other aspects than to each other well either way you have come away now with uh two victories in the Max Benz Open. Is this going to inspire you to uh, come back for the next one, or are you going to take a couple of years break like you've had last time? Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that I, I'll, I'll be able to attend more Max Benz races in, in the future, but now that I've won two of them, I'll certainly try to pick uh the events that i i seem to be attracted to instead of just doing every single one and uh trying to get that first win or, or second win all right well fair enough indeed timu but before we let you go is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to anyone you'd like to thank from your top step on the podium well i'd like to thank my thank my team my boys back at the shop nexus esports for the amazing job they did for this event and uh i'd like to thank my my, my stream viewers at uh, twitch.tv slash tesnauki uh and uh for, for for the all the all the comments for the positive and negative comments they've they've given me and uh i'd like to thank my my uh new new sponsor just this week uh imprimo.fi for the awesome print jobs that they've done and uh code testnoki for 20 percent off your purchase and uh yeah thank you stream team for the amazing broadcast and uh thank you organizers for the uh great event thank you very smooth plug there from uh, Timu Toika. Timu, two-time Toika now, is his nickname in Max Bantz. And uh, I, uh, you know what, Jay, I'm absolutely loving the fact that, uh, you know, you've got these standings up. The overlays are from Last Man Standing, but the backdrop is Le Mans. It's, it's, it's simply incredible. But we do have Austin Knight in the commentary box here. Second place for you, Austin. Congratulations. After starting from 18th, I mean, you know, I, I, we certainly weren't expecting you to be in contention at the start, but you got there in the end. Yeah, it was just... Uh... It was a lot of turning left, a lot of dodging. I just followed the five Ds of dodgeball, duck, dip, dive, duck, and dodge. Uh, that's and two ducks. That's a joke. Beautiful. <laughs> and uh, I somehow came out of that uh, in second place and with all four faster pairs. So that's a win in my book. Excellent stuff. I mean, it must have been very difficult to uh, resist the temptation to... Uh, get that fast repair done um because well, you know I had, I had a few drivers that under pit tried to take it away from me <laughs> under uh, the pace <laughs> laps so uh, it was a running joke in the discord but yeah uh can't believe that would happen I, i'm just surprised to be here uh best max fans finish ever and best overall league race finish ever <laughs> Well, that's certainly an achievement that you should be proud of. It's, uh, it's a shame that we don't 
have the uh, the Winra trophy in uh, in grey silver. Otherwise, I'd uh, I'd give that to you right away. But um, how does this compare to the other Max Bands events you've done so far? Where does it rank? Uh caution wise first. Yes. Uh, Panther wise first. Stress levels. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! Oh my goodness! I I might be like I'm I might be streaming with an animated avatar right now, but you can tell that avatar has seen some years on his life and wants to die. Oh <laughs> my goodness! Oh my lord! Yeah. So I mean, either way, uh, this is a, a great result for you to come away with after starting well outside the top ten. You managed to survive. You managed to get to the end. Um, do you feel motivated now with the second place to uh, try and go for that first Winra trophy? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I can only go up one spot from here, and uh, I know I can last to the end of uh, your crazy concoctions of torture and all that stuff, but you know what? I like it, and I'm a, I'm a sadist, so let's do this. Excellent stuff. Well, we hope to see you next time, Austin, and we hope to have a chat to you again after the race. Before we let you go, anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to? Absolutely. I want to thank all my friends who uh, stopped by, watch us, everybody in the uh, RCG uh, Motorsports group, everybody at Artesian Builds, my uh, wonderful sponsors, and also my employer that put up with me <laughs> from time to time. And uh, I know I'm probably going to get canceled if I say this, so I'm just going to I'm just going to say this. I want to say. Thank you to everybody at Insert Broadcasting Na TV iRacing Company name here. It's okay, so I don't get removed from your channel. All right. Beautiful. Austin Knight, second place in the 14th running of the Max Bands Open, the Archbishop of Banterbury. Well, Sperry, that brings to an end proceedings for tonight. And uh, wow, uh, I... Uh, uh, I certainly wasn't expecting a lot of what came out of this race. You know, there's been occasions uh, on Max Bance in the past where, you know, I've known exactly what we'd be getting into. But, you know, even with this one, I felt that this threw up a few surprises. I, I think it did as well. And I, I think it's very important to be diverse when it comes to Max Bance. We've done 14 different Max Bances. We've had 14 different formats and everyone goes, oh, this format's good. Oh, this format's not good. Some drivers are not happy that they got tapped up from behind with every uh, little hit that went on under cautions. This was going to be a caution fest. What more were you going to expect? You all in the uh, suggestions point of the Max Bantz Discord went, run Bristol, run Bristol, please run Bristol. No, I've done it now. So we don't have to do that again for a very long time. But what I will say is that I already do have the idea for Max Bantz 15. And importantly, I want it to be a homage to one of the great racing drivers that has been out there. I won't say any more, but we're coming up on an anniversary in September. And for that, we're going to have a really, really fun race. And I hope that everyone's going to go out there, is going to enjoy it. And uh, hopefully they're going to like cars which don't have very much in terms of a fuel tank. Oh, what could that mean? Let's see in 13 weeks time where uh, I'd say in about 11 weeks time, you'll be able to catch the trailer for that on this on my YouTube channel, Southpaw Racer and the live stream on the Southpaw Racer channel and on SimSpeed TV. Well, that brings to an end the 14th running of the Max Bantz Open and uh, really a fantastic drive from Timu Toika. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to stay tuned to uh, my channel, Southpaw Racer, because in just over two hours time, I've got the premiere of the next super serious track guide. The Hanoi Street Circuit is finally making its way here. And Jake Sperry is credited as co-writer of that particular video can't wait for you to watch it and see what you think of it join us for the premiere if you will in about two hours time but it's uh, my duty here to thank jay kennedy and sim speed tv for their continued support of this event and jay for dealing with uh, mine and sperry's bs over the years with max bantz and making an appearance here in the comms box thank you very much to sperry for his tireless work setting up this event thank you very much to Keenan Cousin for your administration duties in this event with the competition caution and we will see you all 
hopefully in another 13 weeks time for the next Net Max Bands. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. And we will see you later. Fantastic! This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he can't win the outside of both of them! Oh, he's taking Anderson! Anderson's up to him! Oh my god! Oh my goodness, half the field's gonna get rolled! This is very close. These guys are when I wanna make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go! Oh no! That's massive! This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my god! God, what?!